All right, good morning, guys. Um, next year is going to be the Legion of Superheroes 60th anniversary. Oh, my gosh. I think their first appearance was Adventure Comics 247, maybe. Should have looked that up before the video, but we're, you know, around there. And it was by Otto Binder and a guy named Al Plastineo. Plastineo? Just butchered that name. But anyway... But anyway, 60th anniversary, and a lot of people, I mentioned it in my last video, and I was talking about how it seems like I've been seeing some things online with Twitter and stuff to where uh, there's definitely a buzz building up about the Legion of Superheroes. Legion of Superheroes has always had sort of a cult following. The Legion of Superheroes takes place a thousand years uh, in the future of the DC Universe. Thus, uh, despite having connections with Superboy and Supergirl, uh, Superboy actually being the person who... Uh, uh, inspired the Legion and things like that and the time travel aspects and having this little ties here like Brainiac 5 being the descendant of the original Brainiac and things like that. It is basically a world of its own with a huge cast of characters and stuff. So basically you have a sandbox where you're kind of cut off from the rest of, you know, the continuity or whatever of DC and you kind of get to do your own thing. Sci-fi, soap opera, horror, magic, uh, this whole universe to explore and everything, the concept of the Legion. And it's all pretty cool. And they all started out as teens doing this. And they played around with that. You would get these imaginary stories where they would have some kind of machine um, that would let them see in the future and see the adult Legion. They would have characters pop up that years later you would find out who they were, uh, Reflecto and things like that. And they, they dealt with the death of these heroes before... Uh, the Silver Age was over and stuff. You had the death of uh, one of uh, Triplicate Girl's... Uh, Triplicate Girl was a character who could split into three people and be the same person, more or less. And uh, a creature called Computo killed one of them. She became Duo Damsel. Fero Lad died uh, under Jim Shooter's reign. Uh, Jim Shooter started writing the Legion when he was 13 or 14, and DC didn't realize he was a kid because he was, he was taking paper and more or less kind of loosely drawing the book and putting it in the word balloons and stuff. But anyway, you had Fero Lad die uh, fighting the Sun Eater. You had a uh, Lightning Lad uh, go, go through hell. He lost an arm. He ended up dying. And then you had probably, I don't have a copy of it. That's what's so funny. Uh, but I've, I've read it many times, but apparently I don't have the book or can't find it. But then you had Lightning Lad who was dead. And they all got these lightning rods, the Legion did, and they all surrounded him, and they all placed their hand on his glass coffin, much like, you know, Snow White. And whoever got struck by lightning um, and it got hit with the rod, they would die, so Lightning Lad would come to come to, uh, come to life. Uh, to me, I, I thought, considering that was a Silver Age story, I thought it was like, that was, I thought that was intense, you know. So... Next year, Legion is going to be 60, 60, <clears throat> their 60 year anniversary. A lot of people were surprised that they didn't come out with Rebirth, from what I've been understanding. Even had a comment or two I found this morning on my last video. And I've always sort of thought that they're going to tie this in with uh, Doomsday Clock. Uh, I think Doomsday Clock is going to bring back the Justice Society, uh, the um, Legion of Superheroes, and who knows what else, because there's already seeds planted in the last two years. Uh, so I'm just going to show some of my favorite Legion books and stuff, right? Because actually, I've been reading comics since 1977, but they were like my stepdad and uncles and all the magazines they had in the house and all the stuff when I was about four. And then when I was about six, I ended up spending my own money uh, on this 40 cent copy of, uh, and it's a, uh, and it's a um, Whitman uh, variant there, distributor. So this thing should have been in a three pack back then, but the guy had it out. Uh, anyway, I guess instead of getting, because these came in three for a dollar, so I guess he opened it up so he can make 20 more cents, right? But this was the first comic I bought with my money. It's uh, Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes 255. So I didn't stand a chance, you know, I, I, you know, got in there and read, and I was like, who are all these characters and stuff? And what always amazed me that I always, like, freaked out about baby kal -El playing with some toy with a pointy tip on it. But everybody else started going, what the hell is Cosmic Boy wearing? Looks like he's at a Rocky Horror Picture Show. You know, different era, different time. I didn't see it like that. Uh, so then a few years later, um, I ended up getting these adventure comics. I'm missing a few of them. I had to shoot 500. And they, they did two stories a piece uh, of Silver Age Tales of the Legion of Superheroes. There's the debut of Dream Girl and stuff like that. And these were just fantastic. The Legion has actually fought Nero, Hitler, and John Dillinger, you know. 
and uh, just fantastic stuff. They're always tied to Superboy. They always took a little bit of a back seat to Superboy. And over the years, uh, they just kind of started coming out on their own uh, to where you got to see more of the Legion. So uh, these are just some of my favorite stories. I have a whole long box that I dug through. I've got an, other stories scattered around and stuff, so I didn't dig too much, and this could change tomorrow. Some of these are just dead on uh, with some of my favorite Legion of Superhero stories. The first one here is, uh, I need to really, I didn't realize I needed to go back and find these issues, but uh, I want you to look at this name. Okay, this is a, a coverless copy from the summer of 1979. It's got date stamps all over it and stuff. I've carried this thing around forever. And it's by, the story layouts are a guy, Steve Apollo, with Paul Levitz doing words and stuff. And this was the coming, this is a Legion, Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes number 250. Steve Apollo was actually Jim Starlin. He used a pen name for reasons, okay? That's not a history lesson here too much, you know, for a story or we're going to be here forever. But basically what was so cool is that Kim, uh, Chameleon Boy here is starting to put things together. He's starting to realize that there's a traitor, there's a big of conspiracy going on with uh, the Legion. And as he's sitting there thinking about it and figuring it out, a figure with a hood comes out exposes, you know, takes off his hood and knocks uh, Chameleon Boy out, walks away, and then Wildstar shows up and gives us our exposition. And over the last few months, he goes over about there was a murder they investigated, which was he describes as a screw, screwball case, which was followed by Ultra Boy being framed and chased halfway across the universe, which is one of those classic uh, stories about Ultra Boy, um, about the Legion, about Ultra Boy being a fugitive, being chased. They found out Wildstar was um, uh, being impersonated by a robot, and Superboy got him. And uh, they thought everything was all cleaned up, but it left two, two, uh, it left two big obvious uh, clues that Chemical Boy and Wildstar and everybody wanted Chemical Boy. Chameleon Boy and Wildstar wanted, uh, answered was who made the robot and why and all this stuff, right? So, um, yeah, that's one of those classic stories about there's a there's a conspiracy within the Legion, right? Uh, and then we're going to skip ahead a little bit, and uh, we come down to this, okay? Now, in the days of John Byrne and Chris Claremont and uh, on X, Uncanny X-Men, and they were going head-to-head -head with Marv Wolfman and George Perez's uh, Teen Titans, and as we got into the 80s, around 82 and 83 and stuff like that, there's a book that was just, that could have just went nose-to-nose -nose with them, with what Keith Given and Paul Levitz were doing. And so these are some great little gems to find, okay? Uh, but, you know, it was Legion of Superheroes, and I want to say it was like from 284 to like maybe three, uh, 319 is probably a really classic run and stuff. But this was the Great Darkness Saga, and this thing was just freaking brutal. These ash-ridden, just powerful creatures just started flying in and you looked at them and they were kind of familiar it turns out they were clones clones of orion of the new gods clones of superboy there's three or four of them and the legion had to go after them and fight them and they, these guys were like super powerful and then the mystery was you know who was behind them right there we go there's a couple of them they're fighting there right and the mystery is is why are their powers so familiar and who's doing this why are they attacking and uh, this book, this story really started getting noticed as it went on over the months. And then you find out that it's Dark Side, the return of Dark Side, fighting the Legion. And bam, this book got put on the map. That's the way I remember it. You know, maybe I need to get online and look at the Legion lore and all this stuff. But this is considered a classic, right? Just fantastic. Just fantastic stuff, man. So, yeah, <clears throat> you have uh, these, you know, teens who are more or less probably closer to being adults there ended up going after being, you know, gone after by, you know, dark side. Just a fantastic thing. Okay, so to follow that up, um, Legion of Superheroes hit number 300, and they even say that, yeah, 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 technically this started out as a Superboy book and then Superboy and the Legion and stuff. But uh, on this cover, they had a whole bunch of artists come on, and each character on this cover is drawn by a different artist, and you had to guess who it was. Dave Cockrum's on, it was past the Legion... Um, artists like uh, Dave Cockrum before he went to the X-Men, uh, Joe Statton, then you have like George Perez and Walt Simonson, Kurt Swan, 
uh, just all these, all these guys, man, came in here, uh, Gil Kane, I think is on there, and just all kinds of stuff, and basically this uh, takes the story of all of a sudden Fero Lad, who died in the Silver Age, has a twin brother who's like in this weird comatose state, and Brainiac and another little bug-like scientist are, in, are projecting what's in his head. And they're thinking he's having like some kind of schizophrenic breakdown or something like that. And it turns out he's seeing other realities. So we get to see alternate realities of the Legion and they bring back past artists and stuff uh, from the Legion to do it. It was an anniversary celebration. Really great stuff. They have the adult Legion in there. More Drew comes in there and wipes out the earth and wins the magic war and just all kinds of crazy stuff. So I have my, ori I just, I have my original and then this is one of those books that I just pick up every time I see, you know, stuff like that. Then that was followed by this fantastic story. I have an upgrade of it. Issue uh, 301, and it's uh, going back. Uh, it's an homage cover to uh, Adventure Comics and stuff uh, with the Legion and stuff. And But it's a chameleon boy in R.J. Brand. R.J. Brand was the person that more or less funded the Legion of Superheroes because... Ten years after the Legion's debut, we get an origin, and it turns out three teenagers, Cosmic Boy, Lightning Lad, and Saturn Girl, were more or less on a ship, like a transit. It had a little bit of a film and war feel to it, and R.J. Brand had some assassins or something come after him because he's the richest man in the universe, and they saved him, and R.J. Brand was like, well, I'll fund your team and stuff, right? Well, R.J. Brand, it turns out, is a uh, Daxamite. I think that's what they're called. They're on Durla, not a Daxamite. They're on, he's a Durlin. Daxamites are Monel and... An old offshoot of Kryptonians. But anyway, he's a Durlin. And Durlin's had some kind of war that that lasted just a few minutes. And it was so, so destructive that there's no history before, before that. And everybody on the planet ended up getting shape-shifting powers from the radiation, I think, to survive. So they don't even remember their true form. And R.J. Brand ended up losing the shape-shifting abilities and ended up looking like that. And Chameleon Boy has lost his shape-shifting abilities. So they go back to Durlin. Uh, Dorla, <laughs> it's, it's really early. I need more coffee. And he's going to try to get his powers back. There's there's a very dangerous way to do it. And this ends up being a father and son connecting because Chameleon Boy had no idea that R.J. Brain was his dad. It was revealed. And now they, the story is him getting his powers and stuff back. But the real story is these two talking about why'd you do it, Dad, and all this stuff. And ends up being redemption because his dad sticks all the way through with him to get this and stuff. Meanwhile, while that's going on, we get to see a little bit of the Legion Clubhouse and the stuff they're doing. And they're training and they're playing uh, 3D holographic Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. Some really cool stuff, man. Good stuff in here. But, of course, there's a tribe. You know, it can't be simple, but there's tribes on Durlin. And, uh, you know, he has to deal with them and go into battle with them and the way shapeshifters have a huge fight it is worth seeing it was just freaking genius so legion 300 301 two of my favorite issues all right along with the great darkness saga moving on here um sort of an offshoot you'll see a lot of these are from the 80s keith giffen and paul levitz just nailed the book okay they're one of those classic teams and stuff right but there's a one shot here uh of the legion of superheroes by keith giffen and stuff this thing is hilarious you need to get it it's cheap, and it's great, and it's funny. It's awesome. All right. So we'll take an interlude here, and I'm going to explain a little bit about the Legion and stuff. As you see on this cover at the top here, uh, these are different eras of the Legion post or pre-Zero Hour. You know, this was after Zero Hour and stuff. They did some reboots and stuff, right? Anyway, here's the Silver Age Legion, okay? And then here's the 70s Legion where Dave Cockrum and Mike Grell came in and ended up doing, you know, the swimsuit era costumes with them. The 70s is very interesting. It had some great art, but the stories didn't always match up. You know, you, it was really unbalanced and stuff, right? Then you had the great five years later. After Paul Levitz, uh ended his run on it, they didn't exactly reboot the book. They put it five years in the future. And the Legion has grown up, split up, and we, the planet's been uh, in a, invaded by the dominators and it's just sort of like grim and greedy, greedy and stuff it's it's kind of like after war and there's still there's still dominators around and stuff and the first 12 issues is a murder mystery and it's the legion coming together it's in nine panel grids and i've showed here in a minute and stuff right so this is fantastic and then after post zero hour we got some of this stuff you know 
uh, there was a three boot. It was called a three boot, and it was like in the mid 2000s by Barry Kitson and Mark Wade. And that's pretty much just sort of forgotten about. That was freaking awful. And it went to the point to where it started out with we're seeing the new legion and the revolution, and they hate anybody that are over 30 or adults or something. It was just, it was awful. It was so bad, and they ended up sticking Supergirl in there, and then eventually they brought Jim Shooter back on the book, and Jim Shooter, and it was just amazing. They didn't reboot. It was a soft reboot. He just started writing them like the older Legions, like the first three years of that series never happened. You know, it was awesome. You know, I think it was like from 34 to 50 or something like that, and it was hilarious. Now, back to some of my favorite stories. Where are we at here? Where are we at here? Okay. Uh, they're not exactly in order. I thought having an order better. Well, we'll start here. Okay, so the Baxter series comes out in 1984, right? And you had the newsstand that, um, was still going on with their stories. So this was a 12 issues ahead of that. So the newsstand edition stayed a year behind the Baxter series, right? And, uh, I'll probably have it, but I've got two sets of this. This is issues one through, let me make sure, one through four. Okay, one through four of the Baxter series. And I think this, ser this story ended up becoming an eye for an eye. So what happens is, is basically you had the Legion of Super Villains uh, going for an all-out war with the Legion of Superheroes. And it ends with the death of a beloved character. There's another part in this. Oh, well, I think there's some more parts to this. I'm sorry, man. It's like issue five, I think. But anyway, you come in there and uh, Karate Kid... And Princess Projector had just got married and stuff, right? And then this happens. The, there's an all-out, you know, all-out freaking fight by the Legion of Super Villains coming after him. And you have a character by Jim, created by Jim Shooter called Nemesis Kid, who, who pops up more. And Nemesis Kid is able to gain the power, uh, the ability to, to defeat whoever he's fighting. So you have this great big, huge karate kung fu battle with Legion flight rings and them flying around and stuff. And, uh... Um, I'm not going to say that Nemesis Kid kills Karate Kid, but Karate Kid ends up maybe sacrificing himself, you know, after being freshly married and stuff, man. And, and that just freaking tore you up if you were into the Legion. Because that's a different about the Legion. You got a little bit of everything in there, man. You got adventure. You had uh, these characters dating. These characters were having sex. These characters were... I should have popped out a book, uh, Colossal Boy and Shrinking Violet were uh, seeing each other. And she had a... There's another superhero, Duplicate Boy, or something like that. I know how this sounds, but he was able to duplicate anybody's powers. He was, like, really powerful. He was, like, their version of Superboy, you know, Superman. But he came down and uh, caught the Colossal Boy and Shrink and Violet sleeping together, and they turned into, both turned into giants, and they're, like, knocking down mountains fighting over this girl, you know. It was, it was hilarious. So that, that was a really great one. Um then this is an unofficial Crisis on Infinite Earth crossover. This is uh, Legion of Superheroes number 16. But Supergirl has died in Crisis on Infinite Earth number 7. And Brainiac and Supergirl were in love. That was her boy from the future. This was the Romeo and Juliet version of in the Superboy, Superman mythos and stuff. Because this is a descendant of the House of Brainiac, you know. And she's the House of L and all this stuff, but this is kind of Brainiac dealing with uh, Supergirl dying in crisis. It's a really touching story. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll go in chronological order. Now, a minute ago, I talked about the Five Years Later Legion, right? I love this, okay? It was by Keith Giffen, Tom and Mary uh, Bearboom, B-I-E-R-B-A-U-M, and Al Gordon came on there. And like I said, the first 12 issues is more or less loosely the Legion getting together in this grim and gritty universe and stuff, very dark and stuff, right? Um, number two and stuff, right? But there's been a murder and there's a, somebody that's back, that's Roxas. There's a whole, like I said, if you know you're, this was really made to where you had to really know the lore, uh, do a little bit of work and stuff to know who the characters were and stuff. But I mean, it's still a fun read. Monel coming back, putting on the costume, you find just getting the band back together during a great mystery. And the first 12 issues were just fantastic. Uh, some of the characters have changed to where they're unrecognizable, and that was part of the fun is you had to figure out who they were. I mean, I really need to uh, get in here and organize some of this stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, and then we started getting clues of who is who in here. You know, so it was just a, I just love this first 12 issues, nine panel grids. Then it started lighting up a little bit with, like, finding out that the silly characters like Matter Eater Lead 
matter of year, lad, you get drafted into doing politics on your planet. You know, you don't get voted in, you get drafted and stuff. And then the Legion comes back and we start getting more traditional stories still in that five-year universe. Um, so like I said, uh, that, that, that sort of went on and on. And then around issue 38, this, they took a classic sci-fi, to me, template. I want to say Philip Jose Farmer and Tongues on the Moon did this or something, but I saw it in some older, you know, it's, it's, it's been done before, but basically, uh, the earth is blowing up and all these cities or, uh, maybe smaller continents. I can't remember in this book and stuff like that, but they put a dome over, over themselves and they become ships and they fly off to the earth while the earth is blowing up. And death, uh, from Neil Gaiman's death sort of has an appearance in this, okay? There's some great, this is just a great telling of the earth blowing up and what people are seeing and everything like that. Really good. This is really deep. It's number 38. And then uh, we're about done here, guys. But anyway, uh, there was a trilogy going on with Jeff Johns bringing back the Legion there. Um, late 2000s and stuff. And it started with Justice League, GSA having a crossover. And it was called the Lightning Saga. And then all of a sudden, in Action Comics, out of the blue, let me find the first issue here. Yeah, it looks like it was in 859. Now that's part two. Part three, part five, part one. Starting in uh, 858, uh, all of a sudden we had Superman coming back and he has a Legion flight wearing. And there's been continuity issues going back to the 80s where John Byrne said Superboy didn't exist and stuff. Well, this was starting to fix it. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden we have a Legion story going on. And we go into the future and we find the Legion of Superheroes uh, in the future finding Batman's Batcave. And... Uh, I think Brainiac ties in and stuff, but we see Return of the Legion, and uh, they've grown up, time has gone by, and this is feeling like the 80s Legion, Paul Levitz and Keith Giffen has come back, and basically what's going on is all over the world, uh, Earth is for Earth, and there's a xenophobia going on where they want all the aliens off of Earth, there's this hate going around the world, so Nemesis Kid becomes Earth Man, and he's their hero and stuff like that, and Kal-El is like, you know, he was really a Kryptonian and stuff, but they, it's been twisted around where he was the ultimate Earth man and stuff like that. Great story. And this, of course, topped off in something that was just spectacular. I didn't dig out all the individual issues and stuff, but during Final Crisis, we got Legion of Three Worlds by Jeff Johns and George Perez. And this is something that should be in everybody's freaking collection. The art in this is just fantastic. You get three the three versions of the... Uh, of the Legion. You get the original Legion, you know, where they kind of left off in the 80s. You get the post-zero hour um, Legion, and then you get that three-boot Legion, which just was awful and stuff. But they're all in here. It's a Legion of Three Worlds. Now, these are just the books in my collection that I didn't really have to dig too hard for. There's other great stories of the Legion of Superheroes. The Legion Lost put them on the map there for a while. That was just a really highly acclaimed 12-issue series by uh, DNA, you know, um, uh, Dan Abbott and I can't remember his partner and stuff right now. And there's there's so many great classic stories out there. This is one what I this is maybe just something to get you started. Maybe like pop in there and see if you like and stuff. But out of everything, even if you didn't like a Legion fan, I always push uh, Legion of Three Worlds. This is just fantastic. All right, guys, I will catch you later. Bye.